Welcome to your very simple to understand tutorial on how to complete the main easter egg in the darkest short for World War 2 zombies. This easter egg can be completed on solo and in co-op but I do advise this to be done in a co-op game if possible because it will make your life a lot easier. Now there are no prerequisites before starting your game but I do recommend you put on some great consumables as well as make sure your perks and mods are very well optimized for the team that you'll be playing with. Definitely shell shock and camouflage are are the abilities I would advise you when jumping into this easter egg as it helped us out a ton. But just before we get into it I'm giving away a few codes for the DLC so you can get the darkest short on PlayStation 4 and if you want to be entered make sure you've dropped a thumbs up on the video, you subscribe with notifications turned on and leave a comment down below with the words DLC giveaway. But feel free to use the comment section as well to help you find players on any system that need help in completing this easter egg. Now as well as me visually showing you everything in this video I also have a written guide for some steps down below in the description so for any point on screen there is the words written tutorial below that also means to open the description if you need some additional help but jumping first in you want to make sure that you've activated the power and you've obtained the rip saw it's all pretty standard stuff and if you don't know how to do that I won't include it in this video but I have links in the description which will take it over to a guide showing you how to build the rip saw so putting on the power and then the artillery bunker power and then getting the rip saw and up upgrading it to the ranged rip saw is going to be our first steps here. Once you've gotten that, you want to take yourself and whoever has the rip saw over to the cliffs near the Pack-a-Punch and you want to aim at this body that's hanging and aim for its head and shoot one of the ranged rip saw blades and it should saw the head off of the hanging body and you then want to pick it up and take it over to the U-boat pens. At the back of the room there is a door with a hanging body. You want to place the head onto this corpse and the next objective here is to get kills near this corpse gate to power it which involves killing a few zombie souls. Now I do advise that if you're doing this on quite an early round that you have some decent weaponry and you've got a few perks for your disposal because once you've gotten enough kills there's going to be a segment where you are locked into this room. So feel free to start getting some kills but don't get any more than I'd say 10 or so because at that point the room will be locked down and you want to make sure that you have at least some decent weaponry and perhaps maybe jack in the boxes or camouflage ability definitely earn at that point as the room is going to get a little bit hectic. Once you've gotten enough kills this new sequence will commence where fire will come from beneath the floors. Now this periodically changes where certain sections of the map will be on fire and then it will be completely fine and you can stand on it. But around this room there are going to be three valves and it's going to take a little while but eventually one of these valves is going to become clear of fire shooting from beneath it and you'll be able to walk onto the platform that the valve is on and be able to turn the valve to turn the valve on essentially. It's going to be one at the back by the stairs, there's one by the minecart entrance, then there's another in the back of the room to the right of the door. And the sequence probably takes about two to four minutes where you're just avoiding the floor where there's fire, waiting until parts of it has calmed down and you can stand on it and keep watching around till you notice a valve is free from a fire plate underneath it and once you've turned all three valves this will open at the corpse gate you'll see this horrible sequence where the body in the door will be literally ripped apart and once this is open you will now have the corpse gate open and a brenner zombie will spawn this is the flamethrower zombie from the first map you want to make sure you take this guy out because once you've done that it's going to start a new segment where planes are going to be flying across the island Island. Now pay very very close attention to where you go at this part because these planes can do a lot of damage to you from the skies out of nowhere so make sure you're very quick on this but you want to make your way up towards the top of the island so near the artillery bunker and around that area there's going to be three different flak gun locations. Now again this can be done solo or co-op and you want to enter one of these flak guns and just keep firing down at these aeroplanes which are doing constant loops around 
around the map from different angles and you'll hear your character quotes to help you out on exactly what direction they're coming from but the objective here is to shoot down enough planes for you to get an objective completion on screen and for the planes to disappear now on solo this doesn't actually appear to be as difficult as it seems as you can very easily take out the zombies which are attacking you whilst you're on the flat gun and you're in this for an infinite amount of time and you can see how much health the flat gun has by this bar that's on the bottom middle of your screen the objective is to just keep watching for planes flying over and to just keep shooting them there isn't an exact amount you need to shoot before this step is completed you just need to keep going until you get an objective on screen show that the planes have been destroyed now that you've managed to complete that make your way back down to the u-boat pen section of the map and in this new corpse gate that we opened you now have this area called the freezer it's a very small room and there's a terminal on the right which allows you to summon a artillery bomber eventually this will spawn the artillery bomber and it's a friendly bomber with a limited amount of health that will be depleted by other zombies attacking it so you want to protect it and it will do a escort run from here all the way up towards the artillery bunker so it's up to you to defend it whilst it makes its journey and as it's running across the map towards its journey from the u-boat pens to the artillery bunker it has a battery strapped to its back which we're going to be using in just a moment but as long as you have some fairly decent weapons perhaps pack a punch the starting pistol and that's a great way to defend the bomber as it can't be damaged by your own bullets which is great just escort it as it makes its way over to the artillery gun section in the bunker the bomb will explode and place the battery into a canister which now can be charged by collecting zombie kills just like with any normal zombies map by killing zombies you'll notice the electricity from the zombies will surge into the battery and this is actually powering this massive flak cannon but we won't use that at this moment in time we will be using it shortly but there's a few things we have to do once we've charged up the cannon and it's no longer accepting souls once it's finished collecting souls we now need to go and assemble a radio which is from two parts the first part is going to be a radio part which is very easy to find in the map and it's radio just part. below where you buy the stamina up perk and it will be on a dead soldier just lying there and the second radio piece is going to be by shooting a crashed plane body above the shield blitz with the ranged rip saws this is going to be along the cliffside just before the stairs that lead up to pack a punch you just want to aim your ranged rip saw shot up here and it will shoot down the radio and you can pick that up and now we have two pieces for the radio make your way back over to the artillery bunker and just outside it there's going to be a table by this mystery box location where you can put both parts down and activate the radio and this will begin a bit of dialogue with your characters and we'll also have a ton of funny dialogue of Dr. Straub being very frustrated with what we are doing on the island but after that it's going to spawn in a load of destroyer bomb ships which are going to be moving around the shoreline now remember a moment ago we fully charged this massive artillery gun well it's time for us to now use it and as you look out in the distance from this cannon you can see that there are boats appearing and that these are randomized every game and these boats do move around as well but they do move until they get to a certain position and then they stop and just keep firing down at the map but you need to use the controls on this artillery cannon to move the cannon to the left or the right and change if the cannon should be pointing higher or lower now you get around about eight shots with the cannon before it runs out of bullets and you'll need to kill more zombies to charge the battery back up to give yourself more shots but with my game and solo that you're watching here I pretty much just winged it and you can go ahead and do the same as well but there is a map just to the right where you can use that to help you out and working out exactly what numbers you need to input in to get your shots accurate but I also really recommend turning on subtitles in your game options at this point if you don't already use them as if you are pretty hard of hearing or you just don't hear these quotes you'll definitely see these on your screen where your character will say if your shot was too high or too low and that way you can adjust it accordingly so you can hit this oncoming boat now there's going to be a total of three 
boat destroyers during this segment and like I mentioned they appear and they can move till they get to a certain position and then stop and then it's up to you to use this cannon to destroy them but you'll know you've done this step correctly because you'll have a prompt on screen showing that you've destroyed all of the destroyers. Once that's completed that's pretty much all of the objective based parts of the easter egg done now we can move on to the slightly more tedious things which you definitely might not get done on your first attempts but nevertheless we'll try and make this as easy as possible for you. Now I'm sure most of you are aware of how to unlock Pack-a-Punch and that's by riding the minecart through three different segments of the map. We're going to be using this minecart again and what you want to do is you want to ride the minecart from either the beach towards the top of the map or from the top of the map towards the beach and during this route once around you can do this if you haven't already is of course there are bomber zombies within the tunnel but what you want to do is you want to have a bomber explode in this specific section of the map as it's going to explode a section of a wall which will open and during your rides in the minecart you'll enter a secret temple area now of course on your first few minecart rides if the bombers aren't in the exact place that i'm showing you on screen Screen, then unfortunately they might not blow up this section and open this little wall for you but if not just keep going once around you'll be able to ride the minecart and there'll be tons of bombers in there and the bombers should be in the correct locations so that you will just ride into them they'll explode and open the wall for you now on your next minecart ride and you're riding across from either the top to the beach or the beach to the top if you look at this now exploded part of the wall and hold the interact button you'll be sucked into this secret secret area. You'll see a door with three holes. Now we're going to be opening that door very shortly but before that there's a little thing you need to pick up within this area of the room and it's a monk's head which is just to the right of the door. Pick that up and then go to the other side of this area and you'll be able to exit it and it will bring you back to the spawn. With that monk's head make your way back to the U-boat pen section of the map. Go inside the corpse gate door that we opened and on the left terminal just simply hold the interact button and you should be able to place the monk head on that left terminal. If you've done this correctly you'll hear the monk telling you a riddle relating to each of the three sons and that is exactly what we're going to be doing for these next steps. So the three sons that the monk was talking about are these three small statues and they range in difficulty of discovering. We'll start with the first one which is very easy to get and in order to get this one you enter the flat gun at the edge of the cliff which is by the artillery bunker and when you're inside this very close to you you're going to notice this boulder and it takes quite a few shots for some reason but eventually it will explode you have destroyed the boulder and that will reveal the first sun and you'll be able to go to the spawn room and you can pick this bad boy up right there now the next one i'm going to show you is actually sun number three we'll get on to two in a moment as you probably won't do that one straight away when you're at this step but this third one is going to definitely be the most difficult and like i mentioned specifically for this step i'll have a written tutorial as well as screenshots in case it appears in areas which I didn't cover within this video but essentially you want to make your way to the part of the map which is just below Pack-a-Punch where we originally shot the ripsaw to cut the body's head off if you want to look up onto the cliff face here you'll notice above the blue fuse there's this weird sort of bush texture once you've seen it for a few times you'll get very familiar with it and you'll be able to spot this quite easily but this is going to move a few times when we shoot it and we essentially need to go around the cliff faces around the map to try and find it so in this game i shot it and it always starts here so you want to shoot your ripsaw blade at it and it disappears once that's disappeared you'll know it's moved and we can move on to the next spot but just before we move you may also find it may have moved just to the wall on your right that is also in this section as well but anyway the next place i found it at was on this section of the map just above where we shot the radio part down so i shot that there and it moved next location i found it at was just above this shelf to this door when it's this close to the ground you can really see that it's sort of like a rock texture more so than the nest that i described it as earlier but i shot that and it disappeared again and this time it was on the cliff face behind me and again it looks a little obvious but if you weren't looking for it you'd never notice it and I shot it and it disappeared again and the final location for it was it stuck out pretty easily and this was just by the double tap perk I shot it and boom it fell down to the ground and I could pick it up 
But like I mentioned earlier, it can be in more locations than what I showed you guys in this video. I, I'm pretty sure there's also going to be a spawn for it, which is going to be facing the stamina up machine from the top of the little hallway that leads you towards that section of the map. But like I said, if you need any help, just open up the description box and that should be all the help you guys need in order to find it. And for our second skull, which is funnily enough our third one to show you in this video, you need to use the rip saw to harvest a normal zombie's spine. So using the rip saw, just simply sprint with it and then press the melee button when you're at a normal zombie and hold down square and it should harvest a spine and you're looking for a spine which has a fuse which is lit up. If it is, you'll see a little bar on your screen and you want to make your way over to the monk's head and you want to interact with this little bucket and you'll notice that the icon will disappear and a normal zombie will now spawn coming from the freezer section of the corpse gate. This looks like any other normal zombie. It's not got any writing on its head or anything like that, but it doesn't seem to be affected by other zombies, so it won't be attacked or anything like that. And it's going to take you to a path which leads you to the spawn where it's going to run into the Red Sea. And after a short while, he will walk back out from the ocean with the last sun head which we need. Now, the zombies can attack him at this point. It doesn't take any damage, but it just looks a little bit awkward, and I think it does affect his movement. So just be wary if you're watching of the ocean in case there's any zombies that are sort of grouped up trying to block him from moving. And now you've gotten all three sun heads. You want to pick them up one at a time, or unless you're playing in co-op, have all players pick up one of them and ride the minecart and enter the secret area through the minecart tunnel and place them in the door, and it will open the door. You now notice going to be like three weird mutual zombies doing a weird sort of praying trance thing we can ignore them but we do need the mutualers at one step which is to of course harvest their spine and this can be done in any order you want but essentially the next steps we're going to be doing is going to be harvesting a mutual to get its spine harvesting a pest zombie to get its spine and harvesting a whistling zombie to get its spine. You don't have to do these in any particular order but we're going to start off by showing you the pest zombie and this is like a mini puzzle of sorts but will make this extremely easy for you. So the first step is to find a pest zombie and perform a heavy execution on it with the rip saw and pull out its spine with a yellow glowing fuse. When you have that you'll see the bar on the bottom of your screen notifying that you have that and you have a certain amount of time to go over to the monk's head and to the bucket to start the friendly pest escort step. Now this is a little tricky but again if you follow exactly what I mentioned in this video you should be able to get this easy from your first time. So by starting this you're going to have a friendly pest but described by the monk this pest is blind so it can't see and it's going to be going around the u-boat pens basically in a loop. And the aim here is to use the ranged rip saw and ricochet saw bullets off these colored wall fuses which match the color that the pest is. So within this area there are a few fuses which are these fuses are high and low and some of the low ones need to be exposed by throwing a grenade at it in this room but essentially what we want to do is have the pest zombie to stand in this exact spot and you to shoot a rip saw at this light blue fuse in the back of the map. You shoot the blade at it, it's going to bounce off that fuse and then go through the pest and you'll notice a surge of electricity and the pest is going to move forwards to a different section of the U-boat pens. For this next shot to work, I always have the pest stand in this spot just below the staircase and I shoot at this yellow fuse. Saw blade will hit the yellow fuse then ricochet off and bounce onto the purple one behind the pest and then bounce off the floor and into the pest and that should be it there. You might need a few shots because sometimes they do bounce off and don't quite hit that purple fuse at the back But once you've done this you'll notice that the pest will start moving again And it's gonna move to this section just below where pack a punch is now in order for this You're gonna need to blow up another fuse box So this only works with grenades by the way not with explosive weapons So bomber zombies or grenades chuck a grenade to expose that fuse and then what you want to do is when the zombie is in this sort of doorway you want to be up on this cliff shoot this blue fuse 
the sword blade will ricochet off this, hit that yellow one that we exposed, and then bounce in the doorway and hit the pest, and that will electrify it. And then that will move on to the second to last section, which is going to be in the artillery bunker. Now, the artillery bunker section has three fuses that we need to ricochet sword blades off, and these again are all covered by a box which needs to be blown up by a grenade. This can be one right in front of the mystery box location, then there's another on the wall there, and then finally one on this little bit just near the flat cannon but in order for this shot to work perfectly when all of these are exposed and the pest is in this doorway you want to back yourself up to this flat cannon literally in the corner shoot at this fuse and it should ricochet off all of them perfectly and hit the pest and that will infuse it with electricity and we can move on to the final one as you can see a pattern is emerging we ricocheted it off one fuse then we ricocheted it off two then we ricocheted it off three and now this last one is ricocheting it off four which which is back in the U-boat pens. Now this seems like the hardest one, but in this I literally got it on my first shot and this will be the perfect way to get this final one. Now in order for this one to work, you want the pest zombie to be in this section of its loop where it's on this walkway, like as if it was about to walk through the submarine trap and with yourself etched in this corner by the buildable bench for the saw blade shoot this yellow one which you're going to need to expose with a grenade and that should bounce all the way through that room and hit the pest zombie as it's walking forwards and perfectly hit it and that will be it i know you've done this right because the pest will disappear and the monk will give you a quote and now all players in the game must ride the minecart and enter the secret room and once you're in this room you're going to notice that the door is going to seal itself off and it's going to be a bunch of pests spawning in including one with a sort of purple glow you're going to want to be killing this one and it's going to drop a appointed head which you're going to place on these hooks on the ceiling in the secret room There's going to be a ton of zombies in here so shell shock is where it comes in very handy as well as camouflage as well once you've done this step once you've killed that pest and you've placed its head on the door behind you will now open and you're allowed to leave and we can move on to we can move on to the next step of the easter egg now again you don't have to do this in this specific order but it's a choice now between the whistling or a mutual zombie which we need to harvest in this game we went ahead and done the whistling zombie and these are of course the massive brutes that are walking around the map you need to run into one of them while pressing melee with your rip saw and harvest its spine and look for a glowing fuse once you have that make your way down to the monk and we can start this step now i do advise you do this at the end of a round and in co-op have someone train a zombie far away from this friendly wood sling as it can be attracted and it can damage it now at this current moment in time there is a weird glitch with the pathing of the friendly whistling so be very careful and do exactly what i say within this so that you don't have this issue but this zombie is going to essentially be attracted to perk machines and we need to guide him around the map in a certain route collecting very specific perk machines. Now, unlike the pest, the whistling will only move when it's near you and will follow you. So you want to be near this friendly whistling and lead it around but be very, very careful as the first perk that we're going to be going for is double tap. Now when you make your way out of the U-boat pens, you're going to take a left and that will take you up towards double tap. Be very careful because the whistling has a tendency to move to the right instead and speed cola is very close to that right so what you can do and apparently this works is if you shoot it it's almost a way of discipline where it will stop moving where it's going and try and follow you again but essentially hug the wall very very tight and make your way out of the u-boat pens very slowly so that the whistling follows you going to the left and you want to make your way up the stairs and lead it towards double tap where it will go over and essentially use the machine to give himself double tap from there the next place we want to go is the artillery bunker where it's going to buy the melee perk you need to be very careful when escorting from here because this will also lead to another perk machine being stamina up so i advise you lead it straight forwards and then drop down here where the whistling will follow you and also drop down that way you can safely move from the 
section here, bunker 2, over to the outlook and then into the artillery bunker where it will buy the melee perk. From there you lead the whistling back towards bunker 2 and over to the stamina up machine perk where it's going to buy stamina up and from this point onwards it's going to walk a little bit faster of course because it has the stamina up perk and the final place it's going to need to go to is quick revive which is in the spawn room and once you've done this correctly you'll know you've done it right because the whistling disappears through this gap in the cliff here. If your whistling dies at this point that means that your whistling did not take the correct order of perks and you're going to need to retry this step again. And a nice helpful tip is when you're doing the pest step on solo this can generally be quite difficult and what I found as well is if during the process say if you were during the third segment of bouncing off the fuses your pest died because too many zombies attacked it when you next to get a fuse and continue that process the pest will continue from that third section rather than you having to repeat yourself from the very beginning which is awesome if you mess up during this whistling step and it does take a wrong perk you're gonna have to wait for zombies to kill it before you can retry this again by getting another fuse but the next step is to ride the minecart and all players in the game need to go back into the secret cave where the door will shut behind you and then you're gonna have a ton of whistling zombies which are going to be spawning not only are they going to drop down from the middle but they're also going to come out through the cracks in the walls and all you need to do is to take out all of them these guys are you know they're going to be a lot of them and some of them are going to have the perks on their back just like the special one which we had to carry around and essentially escort to the different perk machines but once you've taken out all of them you'll notice that one of them will drop the appointed head and you can place it back on the hook above on the ceiling and you then need to take out all of the whistlings and zombies that appear in this room until the door opens behind you allowing you to leave and we're going to need to harvest the spine of a mutual zombie which is the brand new sort of spider one which appears only in the fog and to get these to appear it has to be during a fog round where you come across one or by waiting long enough in the ancient room for a mutual to spawn and when you first enter this room you're going to have three of them in there so it's quite nice to do this one on an early part of your game and maybe get this one done first as you've got guaranteed mutualers in there but you want to essentially harvest one of those to get their spine and make your way over to the monk's head and interact with the bucket which will start this mutualer quest and spawn a friendly mutualer. And the story behind this mutualer is it's going to look like any old normal mutualer but it's going to go and run into hiding. And around the map, you're going to hear this screaming noise, which is the screams of that friendly Mutula. Now, what's happening is the Mutula is actually being attacked by other Mutulas. So you're going to have to run around the map till you hear the screaming and you come across the Mutula. He will be rolled and sort of curled into a ball. You want to shoot the Mutulas which are attacking him. And once that's happened, you'll notice the Mutula that's curled on the ball, the friendly one, will go into hiding again somewhere else on the map. You've got to find him and protect him by killing the other Mutulas. He'll run away again. And on that first one he should disappear and you'll get a quote from the monk if that's completed successfully you want to all make your way all players in the game to the secret room the door will shut behind you and you'll have a ton of of mutualist spawning in as well as a main one which will appear in the center of the room curled up you just want to put all your firepower into him until he dies and drops that appointed head and then place that head on the hook so then you've got all three heads on that hook you can't leave just yet you're still sealed in here with a ton of zombies spawning and you want to be killing these zombies in the middle of the room on this sort of pool of blood as as you kill the zombies this pool of blood is going to fill up more and more and more and once this has been completed you'll know it because the statue in the map will now have a small item ready for you to pick up which is Barbarossa's pommel. This item is a grenade which replaces the jack-in-the-box section of your grenade so if you've got those be very wary. The whole purpose of the pommel is to stun mutualers which will come in very handy during the last section of the easter egg in the boss fight so make sure you pick that up and now you want to get yourself boss fight ready. Get all the perks that you think you require, make sure you've got all weaponry so and sorted including Pack-A-Punch of course. I definitely recommend the SVT Pack-A-Punch or the M1 Garand Pack-A-Punch as it's really really good as that sort of weapon for taking out zombies uh, and then focusing all your fire with LMGs on the mutualers. But when you're all ready to go have all players go towards the radio which we built and you want to throw your Barbarossa pommel at the radio which will activate it and with all players now ready 
all players hold square on the radio and it's going to start the boss fight. And this isn't your typical boss fight as it isn't one huge boss that we're taking down, but we're coming across super mutualers. There are a lot of them. They are very, very powerful. So weaponry that is super strong as well as double tap. And of course, making sure you've got full shield is definitely advised. This boss fight starts on the beach. And like I mentioned, it consists of many super mutualers that will damage you really quickly if you're not careful. And you want to be focusing all your firepower. Now the Barbarossa Pommel comes in very handy as this can stun the mutualers. So by throwing it, it not only takes out zombies, but it stuns these mutualers for a few seconds. Letting you just rain all hellfire onto these bad boys. Once you've taken them all out, you'll know because the fog will disappear and you'll be able to ride the minecart. All players need to get on the minecart at this point as the rest of the map is closed off and the minecart will take you up towards the U-boat pens. During this section of the Easter egg boss fight, like earlier, the room is now going to have fire on the floor as before when you're opening the corpse gate. You need to fight off the same super mutualers and zombies enough while staying alive and of course avoiding standing on the flaming floor for too long to the point where you take them all out and you will be allowed to enter the minecart again. You want to ride that minecart and it will take you over to the bunkers and this is probably the smallest area of the map. It is really horrible because it's so foggy but at this point you will be able to buy perks and armor within this this area so if you're low definitely top yourself up at this point and again you're going to be fighting off these super mutualers and zombies until the fog has cleared and you'll be allowed to run over to the section of the map where you can ride the minecart again and this will lead you down to the beach where you'll finally be able to kill the super mutualers you're at the beach all that remains for you to do is to simply deal enough damage to the super mutualers to kill them once and for all it's such a great feeling when you finally do this again you your Barbarossa pommels come in so handy here as well as shell shock helping you deal with all the other nasty zombies around as well as camouflage in case people go down but once you've done that you'll see a prompt on the screen showing that you've killed the super mutual boss fight and at this point you're going to get the ending cutscene and once that's finished you'll get yourselves the achievement for completing this easter egg and you'll be able to play along to your heart's content until you end the game. You're rewarded with a perkaholic, which is pretty awesome. Again, just like Final Reich, it's not permanent, which is a little bit of a shame, but of course would be very overpowered. But that, my friends, is your guide on how to complete the Easter egg within the Darkest Shore. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Again, if there's any parts which you got confused on, open up the description where there'll be written tutorials for each section which you may need help on. Let me know if it helped you in the comments section. Make sure to subscribe, and as always, I'll catch you on another video very, very soon soon.